Hello again, everyone, and thanks so much for joining us for this uh, Sunday's edition of Alaska Weather. I'm David Percy. Up first, there's a wind advisory, or no, no, first up, we have the zone realignment uh, announcement here that I'll carry until 13th of uh, September, a couple more days. Anyway, that's for the uh, National Weather Service forecast office in Juneau, affects the public and fire uh, weather zones, but no marine zones, and uses the bureau or the <laughs> uses borough and census boundaries to help eliminate overwarning of National Weather Service alerts across Southeast Alaska. And in the graph there on the right, you can see the outlined zone areas, the new outlined zone areas, and really doesn't look too much different from uh, before, as far as I can see. So that's uh, what they mean by transparent to most users. And if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, you can uh, contact juno.weather at noaa.gov for more detailed information. And next up, now wind advisory out uh, near Healy and Delta Junction and north of Black Rapids there in the Alaska Range or north of the Alaska Range through the passes of the Alaska Range as well. South winds uh, gusting to 65 miles per hour expected for areas near Healy and north of Black Rapids and gust of 50 miles an hour near Delta Junction. And uh, this is out from 6 p.m. this evening until 4 a.m. Tuesday. So tonight, uh, Monday and Monday night, uh, that wind advisory is out for those uh, strong gusty winds. And of course, uh, impacts would be gusty winds could blow around unsecured objects. Tree limbs could be blown down and a few power outages may result, kind of the usual wind advisory sort of thing. And from there, looking at satellite imagery, you can see uh, first uh, band of moisture coming up from the southwest, spread rain, clouds and rain in across south central Alaska. And clouds spreading in, mid and high level clouds increasing over the northern panhandle uh, during the day today and uh, pushing northward as well. But the next band there, you can see to the west coming up with a low center just west of the Pribloffs, actually cutting across St. George Island this afternoon. And then the main front there making landfall along the southwest coast, a little bit heavier wind and precipitation with that feature. And uh, then it weakens down across the Alaska Peninsula area and staying dry up over the uh, Northeast interior, Yukon Flats up into the North Slope areas with some uh, clearing up there today, even along the Eastern Arctic coast and the North Slope, uh, Eastern areas. And rolling this through again, you can see the uh, next system bringing the rain in will be increasing again. First one kind of falling apart, just a weak trough as you can see on the chart here with showers, clouds, areas of rain, maybe some fog and drizzle along the coast. And uh, not too heavy rainfall amounts, for example, Seward and Anchorage, both about tenth of an inch in the last 12 hours, and heavier rainfall amounts out to the west. Uh, let's see, Dillingham and Togiak picking up about half an inch of rain, and uh, actually Togiak closer to two thirds of an inch of rain in the same 12 hour period, and then about half inch falling also at flat, and McGrath picking up a third of an inch. So a little bit heavier moisture with that uh, main front than there is with the, origin, with the first trough coming through. As I mentioned, clouds on the increase over the northern panhandle. Otherwise, sunshine down to the south. Temperatures in the 60s again today. And some sunshine up over the eastern interior and the north slope and eastern Arctic coast with areas of fog along the central Arctic coast and areas there. Otherwise, just uh, some showers into the Fox Island, some periods of rain, winds up to 30 miles an hour, 25 to 30 miles an hour around that low center over the Pribilofs. But winds gusted uh, to 40 miles an hour ahead of the front at Nelson Lagoon. Both Togiak and Kotzebue seeing gusts of 35 miles an hour out of, uh, the, during the afternoon today. More of a south to southeast wind for Togiak and an east wind gusting to 35 miles an hour at Kotzebue. Basically uh, pretty dry up there, no, just clouds and some wind with not much in the way of precipitation. But rain will move in this evening up there all the way up to the southern slopes of the Western Brooks Range. You know, look for occasional rain and breezy conditions along the southwest coast and periods of rain into the Cuscombe Valley. 
Rain will increase once again across southern Alaska, and that trough kind of stalling out there over Prince William Sound, that high center blocking its eastward movement. The Copper River Basin basically dry, and some rain or snow higher elevations, the Alaska Range, Talkeetna is into the Chugach, like we've seen the last few days, and stays dry over the Panhandle and dry north of the Alaska Range over the eastern interior, north slope and the Arctic coast and uh, showers diminishing for the eastern Aleutians and dry for the central and western Aleutians with light winds. And for tomorrow, mostly cloudy, chance of rain shows up along the north coast of the Panhandle. It'd be light, more maybe a few showers, periods of rain, north Gulf Coast, all light though into Cook Inlet, kind of showery for Kodiak and the Cuscoom Valley, periods of rain with the main low center now over uh, Nunavak Island. And then for tomorrow, or I'm sorry, for Tuesday, Kind of cloudy and wet, new low forms, weak low, 998 millibars moves up to the Susitna Valley, so it keeps it uh, cloudy and damp across southern Alaska, but not too bad over the central interior. Some sunshine again over the mid and upper Tanana Valley, and high pressure continuing to hold over the panhandle, but rain starting to show up now on the north coast, especially in the afternoon. And the five day outlook for southeast Alaska is a uh, possible moderate to heavy rain developing late Tuesday into Wednesday and then uh, kind of becoming a partly to mostly with a chance of day on Thursday. And for the five day forecast for Anchorage, rain just about every day this week. Best chance uh, Tuesday and Wednesday, or actually Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday, kind of falling off a little Thursday and Friday, but still a pretty good chance there are some showers around. And for the Bethel, another uh, out west, about the same as Anchorage, in fact, pretty uniform. Highs in the mid 50s each day with uh, 50 to 60 percent chance of rain the next five days. And for lows tonight in the 40s, over much of the southern Alaska and the Panhandle, lower 50s, Kodiak Island, highs in the 50s, except lower to mid 60s for the southern southeast coast. And lows Tuesday morning in the 40s, just about everywhere, some lower 50s still hanging on to the Panhandle followed by highs at lower 60s there for the southern panhandle, mid 50s to the north, and mid to upper 50s elsewhere around southern Alaska, mid 50s Bristol Bay for the Arctic coast tonight, North Slope, Brooks Range, lows in the 30s, otherwise lows in the 40s, and highs tomorrow, lower 60s, 58 to 63 for the eastern interior from Fairbanks to Eagle, and 40s up to the north, lows 30s again, otherwise 40s south of the Brooks Range, and highs back into the 60s, upper 50s to lower 60s there for the central and eastern interior, cooling into the upper 40s for St. Lawrence Island. Southwest coast tonight uh, into the Bering Sea, 40s to near 50, and for highs tomorrow, not uh, in the lower 50s, mid to upper 50s, ADAC in the Alaska Peninsula, Bristol Bay near 50, St. Lawrence Island, followed by lows in the uh, Mid to upper 40s along the southwest coast, mid 40s for the Pribilofs, mid 40s central Aleutians, closer to 50 towards Shimia, and 45 to 50 for the Alaska Peninsula. Highs, mid, lower to mid 50s Alaska Peninsula, lower 50s the Pribilofs, and mid 50s central Aleutians to upper 40s for St. Lawrence Island. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. Okay, looking at flying weather for tomorrow, uh, a lot of IFR over the central Bering Sea, eastward right into the interior, and uh, mostly south of the Brooks Range, area of IFR into Cook Inlet, Manuska, Susitna Valley, as well as the uh, North Gulf Coast, Prince William Sound, BFR for the Panhandle, marginal to about Yakutat, and then north of the Alaska Range, eastern interior, right up to the Brooks Range, big area of VFR there, and then some IFR in the central north slope and Arctic coast. And for Monday afternoon, not much change uh, along the Arctic coast there, except some increasing VFR for the north slope. And, uh, but south of the mountains, some IFR in the Koyukuk Valley, northern Koyukuk Valley, marginal VFR, much, much of the western interior, stays VFR over the Tanana Valley, 40 mile country, right on up across Yukon Flats and uh, Copper River Basin looks VFR tomorrow afternoon. Marginal VFR Cook Inlet, a little bit of IFR in the eastern slopes of the western Alaska Range. Then a zone of IFR from the North Gulf Coast, Prince William Sound, Southern Kenai Peninsula, right across Kodiak Island, south coast of the Alaska Peninsula. Panhandle, marginal VFR right on the coast, central north coast, otherwise staying VFR. 
and uh, IFR bearing straight down to the Perloffs, eastward to the southwest coast into about uh, Togiak and Dillingham, and then VFR from ADAC to Shimia. <clears throat> That VFR zone stays Tuesday morning in western central Aleutians and up into the southwest Bering. Marginal VFR now for St. Paul and St. George, as well as the Fox Islands, Alaska Peninsula. Still IFR, Bristol Bay, right along the southwest coast through the Bering Strait and then covering much of the North Slope and Arctic Coast and Brooks Range, some of that getting south into the Koyukuk Valley. Otherwise, the western interior, marginal VFR, southern Alaska, marginal VFR with IFR along the north Gulf Coast and the upslope areas of the Alaska Range, Kodiak Island, IFR, Panhandle, still VFR, as well as the uh, mid and upper Tana Valley, 40 mile country, right on up uh, to the Yukon Flats. And for Tuesday afternoon, IFR, north slope Arctic Coast into the Brooks Range, down across the west coast, western interior. Bristol Bay, Southern Cusquam Valley, all of Cook Inlet, Manuska, Susitna Valley, eastward covering now the entire Copper River Basin as well as the North Gulf Coast and finally some of that slipping into the Panhandle. Uh, marginal VFR now over the northern half stays VFR down to the south and the Bering Sea, uh, marginal VFR, another weaker or smaller area of IFR into the southwest Bering, kind of lifting north of the Aleutians. And for Anatuvik and Anagan, both uh, looking rather marginal for the day on Monday. Lake Clark and Merrill, IFR, either approach, rainy, IFR as well at times, or most of the time. And for Windy, uh, IFR, a little bit better out the north entrance. And Isabel, IFR, southern approach, otherwise marginal VFR. And for Mentasta, marginal VFR, especially south entrance, VFR north side, Tanita mostly marginal, <clears throat> and Portage, um, IFR on the eastern entrance, and Chilkoot and White, an, uh, a VFR day coming up there Monday, maybe even Tuesday. And for the freezing levels, about 6,000 feet interior Alaska, 4,000 feet over the northwest bearing, you can see 6,000 foot uh, freezing level height line there, right on down to the uh, eastern Aleutians and 8 to 10,000 feet over the Panhandle, 6 to 8,000 right across the Aleutians. Icing, uh, again, a lot of moisture coming in, mainly to uh, across southern Alaska from Bristol Bay, but the considerable moderate rime icing possible for the North Gulf Coast, southern coast of the Kenai Peninsula, and maybe central and western Cook Inlet. Otherwise, uh, isolated moderate extends up to Norton Sound and Bristol Bay, the Alaska Peninsula, to about Yakutat. And jet stream. Big upper trough extending from the Russian Far East with the main low right along the southwest coast now. Good jet, uh, 110 knots out of the northwest coming down from the western, or across the western bearing in across Adak and Atka. Westerly is 85, diminishes the up and split there with one branch pulling northward eastern interior, but weakening. And 40 knot winds blowing around that low center off the southwest coast, a little stronger 50 knot winds western Aleutians, 40 to 45 knot winds there right across the Pribilofs, eastern Aleutians, and areas of the North Gulf Coast and Southwest Interior. Considerable moderate chop likely for the Cuscombe Valley, Alaska Peninsula, eastern Aleutians, and western Susitna Valley. Welcome back to another edition of Alaska Weather Facts. I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder, and joining me once again is Eric Stevens from the Geographic Information Network of Alaska, or GINA, based at the University of Alaska Fairbanks. Eric, welcome back to the show. Well, Dave, it's great to be back. Thanks for inviting us again. Sure thing. And, and today we want to talk about identifying burn scars. That would be the, the burned up area after a wildfire when the flames and the smoke are gone. We can see it if you drive by it on the roadway, of course, but uh, from satellite, we can also identify those, uh, those places on the land, right? You know it. Um, you know that expression, ouch, that's going to leave a mark? Yeah. Uh, after you bang your knee uh, getting out of the car? You, oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, the ouch, it's going to leave a mark, that also applies to the landscape. Whenever a wildfire ravages through, it's going to leave a mark on mm -hmm. the landscape. After a wildfire burns out, this is called a burn scar. Okay. And you can ask yourself, well, that's interesting. We can see a burn scar from space. Right. Um, then the question is, well, why right. does that matter? Okay. Who cares? Yeah, fire's over. They're, right, the fire is over. We don't need to worry about this anymore. It turns out you kind of do, okay. because burn scars are important. 
uh, there's this old rule of thumb in the weather business that flood follows fire. Okay. The action of the fire in, in killing off the vegetation, in baking, uh, kiln drying the landscape a little mm -hmm. bit, can hinder the land's ability to absorb rainfall. So if you have a fire, especially if it's in complex mountainous terrain. Right. This is classic in California. Mm -hmm. It can happen somewhat in Alaska too. You get a wildfire in, in steep hilly or mountainous terrain, rips off all the lands, or off the uh, vegetation off the landscape. Mm -hmm. Then six months later, there's a big rainstorm and you get a flash flood in that area. So right. flood can follow fire. That's why you gotta okay. know where the burn scars are. Secondly, a fire needs fuel to maintain itself. So mm -hmm. if there's an old burn scar left over from a year or two ago, and then another summer later here in Alaska in the interior, mm -hmm. it's a big wildfire season. If there's a fire advancing toward an old burn scar, well, guess what? That old burn scar is going to be tougher terrain for that new fire to get through because there's not right. as much fuel okay. in that burn scar. So they almost act like a natural fire break. These are a couple of reasons why you need to know where those burn scars are. Alaska Fire Service has limited resources. They want to put their people and their equipment sure. where it does the most good. They need to know, well, this is an area where there's no burn scar. We better put people here because that fire could really run. So That's really, we really important for uh, weather forecasters and fire weather forecasters for sure. Oh, yeah. But then how do we weather satellites actually detect those burn scars? Ah, good question. Thanks. Well, let's, let's turn the Wayback Machine to the summer of 2015. That okay. was a very active year. We've got a picture here taken up in the White Mountains. This is uh, one of the fires in progress that summer. Mm -hmm. And if you look real close, you can almost see Frodo throwing the ring into <laughs> right. the no kidding. volcano there. So that's uh, quite the vision. Well, let's look at a visible image. Here we are okay. in Alaska's interior. This is before the fires got out of the cage mm -hmm. in early summer of 2015. Let's zoom in to the western interior here. Again, this is a weather satellite image of visible light, what the right. human eye can see. Okay. We're into the middle reach of the Yukon Valley there in the western interior, Galena area. And this is just a beautiful visible day. Uh, nothing much going on. It's, it's early, it's in early June before the fires really yeah. got active. But then in 2015, the fires got loose, especially in that western interior. Right. Here's another image, mm -hmm. the same satellite pass okay. as that visible image, but now we're not quite looking at visible light. Very different. There's a slight change here. This image incorporates something called the veggie band. Okay. 0.86 micron wavelength. The micron's very tiny, yeah. but that wavelength responds to vegetation, the chlorophyll. So trees oh. and grasses reflect that part of the electromagnetic spectrum back to the satellite. And so the satellite sees that. When signal comes at that wavelength to the satellite, we know, ah, there's some vegetation growing there. This is great. You can identify coastlines so easily because you go from vegetation to water. Um, turns out if you have a burn scar, guess what? Mm. You've burned away the vegetation, so okay. that's going to show up. We're going to do a before, during, and after kind of look here. And okay. so we're looking at before. So in this image, we've got a lot of green out there. That's wonderful. Right. Another fun thing about this kind of imagery is you can see down in the Alaska range in the southeast oh. corner of the image, it's blue. Yeah. That's glaciers and snow oh, in the course. mountains. Okay. So this is not really what the human eye can see. This mm -hmm. is a these wavelengths are beyond human vision, but we've, we've made them look certain colors. So the, the vegetation looks green. Now let's look at that same kind of satellite mm -hmm. uh, recipe, but during the fires. This is in July. The fires are loose. You can see the smoke in the middle of the image, the smearing look of the smoke. And then we can see some clouds that are white. Uh, icy right. clouds are blue. So this is in July of 2015. The fires are doing their thing. We're okay. burning up millions of acres. Now let's go to September. The fires are out. The audience has left the theater. You know, the event's over, right? right? We're done. But guess what? Now look at those brown oh, patches. All of those places are where the fire has burned away the vegetation. So you can see where the fire is where you can add the, up these perimeters, get acreage burned mm -hmm. and such. And so that's good to know. Now remember, flood follows fire, and yeah. these are also natural fire breaks. So you need to know where these guys are. In the course of the 2015 summer season, we went from before with not much burn scar in this area to just a couple months later, we can see so much burn scarring on the landscape. What's interesting, wow. too, about the satellite and looking at burn scars is you, you realize that burn scars are the gift that keeps on giving. Uh -huh. You can forget that a couple of years ago, maybe there was a fire in a certain area, but the satellite won't forget. So in the summertime, we get wildfires in Alaska, but guess what? Um, in, the, in the visible imagery here, we can see the burn scars just a little bit but they're not as prominent as in that veggie band. But then you can't see them at all if you cover them up with snow, right? right. Exactly. So here's exactly. an image okay. 
from the middle of the oh, winter time. Wow. And snow on the ground by this, this recipe mm -hmm. looks blue. Again, these are wavelengths of light that the human eye can't really see. We're getting up into the infrared, near infrared. And the way we've assigned colors is if there's snow on the ground or there's a glacier, it looks blue, kind of intuitive. So this is uh, early April of the following year, 2016. Okay. We're just about to get into breakup. We've got a lot of snow on the ground, and so now it's all going to melt. And as the snow melts, then you get our final image here. Mm -hmm. Doesn't this look familiar? This looks like a lot of what we saw in September okay. of the previous summer. So this mm -hmm. is the spring of the next year. Okay. These, the fires themselves might not have overwintered. They're gone, but the right. fire scar does. Yep. And as the snow melts away, and then we have, you have breakup, and then you have green up, uh -huh. when every, the leaves come out, the grass comes back, except in the burned areas, they're having a tough time because everything got burned off the previous year. So you can see these scars even sure. the next summer, multiple years. It depends on how, what kind of vegetation there is. You know, mm -hmm. some of the tussocky tundra grasses, they'll grow back really quick. But to get a, a forest to come back, that'll take much longer. So these burn scars, eventually the, the landscape will, will fill in the burn scar. It will heal itself, if you want to use that metaphor. Mm -hmm. But uh, for the next few years, you can still keep track of these on satellite. And again, the reason we want to do that is that uh, the burn scar can facilitate a flood right. and it can act like a, a fire break. So there you are, the veggie baiting tools. So if you're a weather satellite and you're looking at my uh, bowl of vegetables here, you might be able to pick out which one's the pea, which one's the tomato, and which one's the carrot and, and apply that information uh, precisely to whatever it is you're, you're working on there. That is really fascinating stuff that we have that capability from so high above the planet Earth and right. Alaska for that matter. Yep. Eric, Eat your veggies. Yes, definitely. I think I will. I'm hungry. Thanks so much for joining us again, Eric, and thank you for joining us for another edition of Alaska Weather Facts. We'll see you right here next time. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Monday's marine forecast for the southeast coast. Northwest winds 20 knots, seven foot seas on the south coast. And north coast, uh, west southwest at 15 knots. Lynn Canal Glacier Bay, south at 15. Stevens Passage, north at 15. And northwest winds 15 knots for Clarence Strait. <clears throat> and for Tuesday, 20 to 25 knot winds on the south coast there with seas just under 10 feet. Small craft advisories on the north coast, south winds 30 knots. Small craft advisories are the central northern inside waters. Southeast winds 25 knots, 5 foot seas, Clarence Strait, south winds at 20. Prince William Sound, southeast winds 20 knots, seas 4 feet in the north Gulf Coast, south to southeast winds 20 knots. Small craft advisories for the Barren Islands, south winds 25 knots, southern Cook Inlet and Kamishak Bay, winds will be southeast at 30 knots, and northern Cook Inlet, 15 knots. Then for Tuesday, uh, north to northwest winds at 10 knots for Cook Inlet. Light variable winds at 10 knots for Kamishak Bay. And the Barren Islands southwest at 15 knots. And for the eastern north Gulf Coast, south, or small craft advisory, south winds at 25 knots. Prince William Sound, northeast winds at 20 knots with four foot seas. Kodiak Island for Monday, south to southwest winds 20 to 25 knots. Small craft advisories for the Alaska Peninsula, southwest winds 25 to 30 knots, and Bristol Bay, winds will be south at 25 knots. On Tuesday, Bristol Bay, west winds at 20 knots, otherwise Kodiak Island, southwest winds 15 to 20 knots, and small craft advisories for the Alaska Peninsula, west winds 25 knots, seas right around 10 feet. Eastern Aleutians for Monday, small craft advisories, West winds 20 to 25 knots, and west winds at 20 knots for the central Aleutians. Western Aleutians, lighter winds from the northwest at 15 knots with 7 foot seas. And Tuesday, small craft advisories for the western Aleutians. Winds west at southwest 25 knots, central areas, Adak and Atka, southwest at 20. And for the eastern Aleutians, west winds 20 to 25 knots with 7 to 10 foot seas. And along the southwest coast, south of Nunavak Island, small craft advisory, south winds 25 knots, Pribilofs west at 20, Yukon Delta Coast, northwest at 20, St. Lawrence Island, east winds 15 knots, and northwest at 15 for St. Matthew Island, and Norton Sound, southeast winds 20 knots with four foot seas. And for Tuesday, <clears throat> the Pribilof Islands, small craft advisories, west winds 25 knots, 
And the Kuskokwim Delta Coast, west winds 20 knots. Yukon Delta Coast, northwest at 20 with 7-foot seas. West winds 20 knots with 7-foot seas for St. Matthew Island. And north at 15 for St. Lawrence Island. Norton Sound, winds will be east at 15 knots with 3-foot seas. And for the uh, eastern Beaufort Sea coast, east winds 20 to 25 knots, 4 to 5 foot seas. Central coast, small craft advisories, east winds 25 knots. And the western Arctic coast, small craft advisories for east winds of 30 knots. Then from Cape Beaufort to Wales, winds will be east to 20 knots with 4 to 5 foot seas. And for Tuesday, from Wales to Cape Thompson, east winds 15 knots. And then pick it up to 20 knots on up to toward uh, Cape Beaufort out of the east. And... Uh, the Arctic coast winds will be all out of the east on the central and west side, 25 knots, and the eastern Beaufort Sea coast looking at 30 knot winds with six foot seas. And for tonight, front edges rain continues to increase over south central Alaska again. The original uh, the trough uh, slowing up over Prince William Sound. So periods of light rain for the North Gulf Coast, Prince William Sound, Cook Inlet, Kenai Peninsula, Cuscorn Valley down to Kodiak Island. Some rain coming back in. And a little breezy along the southwest coast with periods of light rain and rain extending all the way up to the southern slopes of the Western Brooks Range, including the Seward Peninsula. And for tomorrow, that front weakens as it pushes eastward. It's going to keep it cloudy and uh, occasionally damp across southern Alaska and the North Gulf Coast, but not too much precipitation in the central interior. Wet and breezy over the southwest part of the state, as well as the Alaska Peninsula eastern Aleutian areas and some light rain up along the northwest coast. Uh, Pribilof Islands, periods of rain, fog, and drizzle. Northwest winds maybe to 25 miles an hour. And westerlies, uh, pretty light out over the Aleutians and dry. And then on Tuesday, look for that front to begin to increase the rain on the north coast of the Panhandle, but high pressure holds on to the remainder of the southeast coast. Cloudy and uh, areas of rain, southern Alaska, not too bad up in the interior, especially the eastern interior. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbormaster before you go boating.